In class 10, we're going to focus on lead vocals. Um, now, and, and also background vocals to a lesser degree. But vocals are probably the, present the most amount of problems in terms of compression of any instrument. Um, and the reason is, is that our human here over the history of humanity has developed most closely and, and the relationship of our hearing perception and its connections to the neural network created by our brain is most solely focused on the human voice more than anything else, because it is through our perception of hearing the human voice and understanding the human voice that we can communicate, that we can most effectively get the things that we need for survival. And so this is something that is inherently built in by design. It's why when you look at Fletcher Munson curves and equal loudness characteristics, that the vocal range, the area around the vocal is the most sensitive area in our hearing and the most balanced at uh, frequency response wise at any given level that you listen at. And it's all the articulation and the focus of the, the voice so that you can hear the different subtle differences between uh, hard consonants of like C's and T's and those types of things so that you can actually um, distinguish words from each other. And as a result, what ends up happening is when you get to recording voices, um, there are a lot of problems that go inherently into people not really understanding what they do. Um, there's not a lot of really great, well-recorded vocal uh, tracks that I get from most sessions. And it's not that they don't use good mics or they don't use high quality mic preamps or they don't use, you know, um, um, you know, good compressors or EQs or good A to D converters as part of the process. Um, this is more about capturing the right tonal characteristic for a person's voice. Um, the Every person's voice is unique, and in the recording process, matching up a microphone with a voice is like a person buying a custom glove in a store. Like, you know, they, you look and it's like, that's a beautiful glove, but, you know, if you have a type of hand that's shaped differently from the way this glove was made, it's just not going to fit, and it's not going to feel comfortable, and no matter how beautiful it looks, it's going to be horrible. It's not going to serve you really well. Um, so you need to find a glove that fits your hand, that is, has the style and, you know, that you are looking for. And so maybe you got a custom made or whatever. So we're not talking about custom making microphones, but we're talking about microphone selection being perfectly matched to the voice. So maybe people naturally sometimes have a really harsh or brittle voice. Some people have a very rich, deep, almost dull voice. And so the selection of the microphone will help to enhance the characteristics that are deficient and maybe to um, cut back on the characteristics that are problematic in the person's voice. So those things uh, require lots of microphone, lots of microphone preamp compressor combinations, and those things are not always available. So you end up with a lot of vocals that have problematic areas in terms of their tonal balance. So a lot of the compression techniques that I use in particular for lead vocals is about balancing out the tonal character of the vocal to make it sound natural and make it sound real. So there's a lot of vintage component stuff here. There's a lot of new technology that's really, really, really powerful and amazing for creating great vocal sounds. Um, and so much of, of this um, is you know, it's, it's really intense, let's just put it that way. <laughs> of all the things that I work with, the vocals probably have the most stacked amount of compressors built into it. And not like any of them are working excessively hard. For the most part, they aren't. But each one is serving a very, very, very specific detailed role in the control of the sound. Um, some of the problems that you get with vocals um, are... Um, S's, you know, sibilance, right? So we'll talk about de-essing, de-breathing for over uh, breath heavy um, breathers, <laughs> as we call them, you know, people who breathe too heavily between words. Um, their, you know, their breath techniques are not particularly great. Plosives. Uh, plosives are, are basically pockets of air that hit a diaphragm straight on and cause a distortion, right? A low frequency distortion uh, that becomes problematic. Um, 
deharshing and deboxing vocals. We've all, you know, worked with, uh, you know, plosives or had to deal with plosives, and uh, de-essing is very common and debreathing, but deharshing and deboxing vocals is also kind of cool. So these are sort of they're all very similar techniques, band limited compression techniques, right? Um, uh, limiter kind of style techniques, quick in, quick out and uh, specific to frequency areas where these problems exist. S's existing primarily more or less in the six kilohertz range, you know, more or less centered around there. Breaths uh, can be a little bit more broad spectrum, but a lot of low end energy. Plosives are, are, are almost, significant, almost totally low sub frequency energy. Um, harshness usually comes somewhere in the 1, 2K range, somewhere in there, sometimes a little bit higher, you know, 3, 4K, depends on the voice and the general tone, and boxiness, which comes a little bit more in the 600 cycle area, maybe 800 cycles. Um, and so we'll kind of go through these things and how you manage um, these different um, uh, um, setups and problems, evaluating them and selecting the right tools for managing them. So, so important because in almost every song where a vocal exists, it's almost always the focus of the track. And so, so critical to, um, to getting great sounds. So, um, and making your mix, <laughs> you know, really come across to the artist and to the people that listen to them. So, this is going to be a big one. Also, we'll get into um, working with background vocals and group vocals and things like that and how you compress and smooth out um, the, the uh, sound of, of um, you know, create certain stylistic um, uh, sounds for like uh, R&B vocals, you know, or uh, rap background vocals or something that's more like a gang, you know, aggressive kind of sound. And so we'll kind of go through some different options there. Okay, there's a uh, uh, class 10 preview. Let's uh, move on to class 11. <laughs> 